Uh, hello, are you here to debate? Yes, I'm here to debate. All right, what's your name, age, and pronouns, please? Uh, my name is Colton. I'm 28, and uh, I guess you could just say my pronouns are he, him, even though I don't identify by pronouns. I'm sorry, can you say that last sentence one more time? I said, even though I don't identify by pronouns, uh, he, him. Okay. Uh, you do identify by pronouns, but that's okay. Um, what are you here to debate about? Uh, well, uh, it, in your topic, in your little backdrop, it says sex education, K through 12. Yes, I, comprehensive you know, sex and sexuality education. Yeah. The reason why I'm trying to debate you on that is because I have three kids in elementary school and I believe that they shouldn't even learn about sex education until middle school. If That's I'm being honest. Dangerous, but okay. Uh, can you elaborate to me how it's dangerous? That I yeah, don't want my uh, kids learning about school yeah, so, content. So comprehensive school. comprehensive sexual sex and sexuality education is gonna be age appropriate information about sexual uh, health, reproductive health, uh, sexuality, these things are going to be age appropriate. So when it comes to people, kids in like primary uh, school, like K through K through three, they're going to be learning things like family circles. They're going to be learning things like respect, consent, bodily autonomy, as well as proper names for their body parts. This is because when kids know these things, they're less likely to be targeted for assault by adults. And they also have an easier time explaining when assault happens. We have 50 years of of so evidence okay, to show that this is important. You, in other words, you are okay with with a five-year-old child in kindergarten learning about the correct terminology for their genitalia that they was born with. Yes, because it stops them from being targeted for assault. Yes. Yes, so you, want, you, do you not want kids to... Can you elaborate to me how, how a five-year-old learning about their genital parts that they was born with is going to stop them from from being assaulted yes because like they're the, better no able sense. they are better able to describe what happens to them when they get assaulted so predators tend to not seek out children that have this knowledge we got this right from the word of mouth of people that commit these crimes uh we've surveyed them and they said we do not why, target why, kids why I don't send my kids to school to learn about that stuff. Because one of the, because one of the, yes, because one of the biggest places that kids are assaulted is the home. So we need to have an advocate, an advocate for children outside of the home so that kids who are being targeted in the home have knowledge outside of, because right, you might want, you might teach your kids that, but what if there's somebody who's assaulting their kid? Why would they teach their kid that, right? They're the ones doing the assaulting. So kids should have an advocate I outside of the home. Saying. I get what you're saying. But at the same time, I am the parent of my own children. You see what I'm saying? My kids don't do anything or listen to anybody unless it comes from me or their mom. Plain and simple. And yeah, not you know, teaching I your teach kids this kids is harmful. There. I teach my kids everything. I teach my kids everything that the school won't teach them, such as, you know, the United States Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. Them are two key topics to our freedoms and our liberties when all we become adults that, by the way. that are not being taught in school. So why, every, why should... Every, all schools why, teach that. I don't know what, what you're talking about. No, they do not. They do. They do. They do not. They learn it in, either, they learn in social studies. Ask kids, do the teachers teach them about the United States Constitution and the Declaration of Independence? And I guarantee you 100% of them are going to say no. I guarantee you... In social studies, they learn about what those things are. Then why are they not teaching cursive in school no more? Because you don't need cursive. You do need cursive. Where? You need cursive in order to read and understand the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution. You also need no, cursive in order to write a formal check. No, we don't. We have it printed out multiple places. Also, who writes checks anymore? We don't even need to write checks for any. You, I haven't written a check in like 10 years you don't need checks this is not a skill that's needed anymore and in fact you don't even need cursive to write a check you just need to be able to sign your name and most kids can't do that most kids can't sign their names i would Correct, disagree but okay you're missing my whole point you were missing my whole point 
My whole point is they are not teaching our children what they need to be taught. Instead, they are forcing our children to be indoctrinated to follow the order provided by the United States government. What 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 order? They are trying to push a agenda. What's the agenda? Do you not see that? What's the agenda? How can you not see that they're trying to push an agenda? No, I'm asking you what the agenda is. What is the agenda? What's the bullet points on the agenda? Okay, so I'll, I'll give you three major bullet points on the agenda that they're trying to push sure. upon our youth. Because, see, they want to they want to stop the growth of the population because by, by the government, our planet is overpopulated. Eight billion people. We're not now, overpopulated. We have enough resources, but okay. The reason why I say that is because, one, they are telling little boys it's okay to go and change their gender and become a girl or a girl become a boy. They are now trying to push for trans women to go into the female's restroom in public. And if you can't if you can't see that they are trying to stop the population growth here in America in general, then you are part of the problem. Yeah, they're not trying to stop the population growth. They're not. No. Not so at can all. you elaborate to me? If they're not trying to stop the population growth, can you elaborate to me why most of the people that have had the C nineteen vaccine, most of them have had heart problems. They haven't. Even 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 little babies that are born by parents that have had the vaccine have been born with heart problems, they heart haven't. conditions. They haven't. They have. They have not. And you have studies to prove that. I don't need studies to prove that because I'm not making a claim. You would have to provide studies that show that this is happening. None exist, by the really? way. Really? So like the vaccination is not causing myocarditis? No, not, no. There's no statistical significance of it, no. Do you know how many people worldwide have been vaccinated? Like, worldwide. Do you know how many people? Wait, can you just answer me? Answer me. No, I said there's no, I said there's no statistical significance. Can you, prov can you, do you know how many people worldwide have been vaccinated? I know how many people worldwide have been forced vaccinated. Can you just answer the question? Do you know how many people? What? Do you know how many people worldwide have been vaccinated? Too many. Do you know I'm the number? Say two, over over millions. Over a million. Well, you'd be correct. It's definitely over a million. Do you want to know the actual number? Give me the actual number. As of 2023, it was 5.5 billion. 5.5 billion. Yep. So let me ask you, when you got your vaccination and your boosters, did you still wear a mask outside? I don't. Around people? But I do when I'm sick. I'll wear a mask when I'm not sick now. So my question for you, if you're wearing a mask that is supposed to stop the spread of this so-called virus, you, do you know it's actually, you are actually harming your body more by wearing that, that mask? You're not. Dr. Fauci wasn't behind all of this. He wasn't. Okay. So if you if you don't agree that they're trying to depopulate the population around the whole entire globe, then explain to me why in 2018 food distribution centers around America got notifications from the FDA to go ahead and put on the nutritional facts that the food product that we have in our own households contain bioengineered food ingredients. So that we know what we're do eating. Know, do you know the number one ingredient that's bioengineered? No, you in tell these me. Products? You tell me. Sugar. Okay. Sugar. I mean, now, most things that I buy, most thing that I buy from the store has doesn't have added sugar. It's just got natural sugars. If you're if you're buying not if you're buying additive sugar, then okay. Do you think next do you time think you go to the store, next time you go to the store, sir, I want you to look on your nutritional facts 
and look uh-huh. at the bottom, it is going to say contains a bioengineered food ingredient. I'm okay with that. Is the, the one ingredient is sugar. I'm okay with that. You're okay with that. Do you yes. understand most most humans are born with cancer cells in their body, and what is one way to actually spread cancer throughout the human body? Cancer feeds off of sugar. Why do you think most of the food in America is banned overseas? Because it's unhealthy. Exactly. Okay, so we should ban. So we should. So we should ban all unhealthy food. We should ban the 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 harmful chemicals that is put in our food. Great. So if the Democrats came out with a bill that wanted to regulate food, right on the government level, you would be okay with this. If who? If like the Democrats tomorrow came out with a bill and they wanted to regulate food to remove all of this stuff. They wanted to make it so that you like federally, you couldn't even add it in, right? Federally, like they would restrict businesses from doing all this. You would be okay with that. I mean, why would not? Okay, I was just making sure. I I don't want my children eating poison that is going to sit here and slowly unalive them. So like what, what type of, is it like most chemicals in our food would be poisonous, do you think? Like red forty. Uh, yeah, like so. So like, like if. It's like that. Okay, so like, like, any of these things are most of these things that, like, if I look at a like an ingredients label, you probably like most of those things in there would probably not be good for us, right? Correct. Okay. What about like, uh, because I I've read studies that like they they tend to put a lot of dihydrogen monoxide in our food. Do you think that's a good thing? You said hydrogen, hydrogen Di- what? Dihydrogen monoxide. No, I actually don't think that's a good ingredient to put in our food. Okay, so we should get rid of, uh, so like to keep it safe, like you were saying, to keep it safe, we should remove all dihydrogen monoxide from our food sources. We should remove every harmful chemical out of our food, yes. I, I'm talking about this specific one because it's in literally everything. Yes. Okay, so remove it from our food sources. What about like, because there are places on Earth where there are like large amounts of this chemical, like just chilling there. Like, you know, have you ever seen like, I don't, I don't know how to describe Have you ever played like, like a Fallout game and they have like just this, like the vats of nuclear waste just sitting there? That's yeah. like, that's like this, like just this chemical just sits there. Um, do you think we should like get rid of all of it from that too? Like get rid of it from the natural sources so that people don't get infected with it like uh when they're just out and about in nature i mean besides it being put in food what else is it being used for That's the uh, so it's used in a lot of things actually hold on i'll pull it up for you uh, specifically so that i can let you know hold on because this is actually this is actually really good for um for the chat you know this is good for the chat and like you're 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 helping us like see uh helping us see like where where the issues are um so here we go um it's used in um oh oh my god where so it's used as an industrial solvent and coolant it's used in nuclear power plants it's used as a propulsion system for navy vessels it's used as a performance enhancer by athletes it's used to make styrofoam. It's used in chemical weapons manufacturing. Like we should probably get rid of this from like everything, right? Yes, but most majority, you said it's in our food. We need to get rid of it. Yeah, it's in. It's food. in. It dihydrogen monoxide is in all of our food. Yeah, it's in literally every. I think the only food products it wouldn't be in is like in dehydrated food. I think they're able to like take it out of that. But in like everything else, it's in every other food thing that you that you're gonna eat. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is they are poisoning our food. Our water supply is being poisoned. Hell, they they there's microplastics in water bottles that we ingest into our bodies every mm-hmm. time we drink water, and our air supply is being tampered with. Well, I mean, you wouldn't want to drink water anymore. The hydro, the hydrogen monoxide is in all water. I already know. 
It, yeah, it's in water it's is our water is all, all water is contaminated with dihydrogen monoxide. Well, that and fluoride, but yeah, um, but yeah, yeah and, the, and the fluoride it, in the water specifically fly, turns the frogs fly, gay. Is being contaminated. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, the only, although the only yeah. contaminant, like the only main contaminant, is the dihydrogen monoxide. Yeah. They literally banned all. I know that everybody's going to be like, it's a conspiracy theory, but ninety-eight percent of the conspiracy theories that people have said, or that I have said, my own self have came true. Really? Which in ones? See, they banned chemtrails from being sprayed over Tennessee in general. Okay where they are spraying barium and aluminum. And if you look up the side effects of barium and aluminum, it is the same side effects and symptoms as C-19. Okay. You know, you know, um, you know, but dihydrogen monoxide is like essential to aluminum production. I mean, yeah. We need to get rid of it. Yeah. I agree. I agree. We should we should remove it. I agree. In food. I'm sorry, say that again. I said why are we using why are we using the same ingredients, the same the same chemical that we are putting in bio weapons? Like you said, chemical weapons. Why are we using that same ingredient and putting it in food? I don't know, honestly. But I agree with you. We should probably get rid of it. We should probably That's take it out of all our food. That's why I sit here and told you, you know, they are trying to depopulate the planet because our 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 population, not just in America but worldwide, we are overpopulated. If you listen to Bill Gates on an interview, he said with the next vaccine or the next epidemic that can lower the population by over one million. Uh, you know that uh, you know dihydrogen to, monoxide. No dihydrogen I'm monoxide is in like all vaccines too. You said it's in vaccination. Yeah, it's in like every vaccination. Most m the main ingredient in most vaccinations is dihydrogen monoxide. And who's the one that regulates all of this stuff to be added into the stuff that we ingest into our body? Uh, the FDA usually. The, yeah, the same FDA that approved, that had approval from the United States Department of Agriculture to go ahead and distribute throughout nations across America synthetic meat. Fake meat. Okay. I, I mean, I'll eat synthetic meat. I don't care. So you mean to tell me the, the, the company... Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the organization, they came out with a, with, it's like a, a product for fruit and vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's called a pill. Have you ever heard of a pill? Have I ever heard of a pill? A pill. Like, I think it's spelled A-P-E-E-L or some shit. It's, it's Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that actually created this, this product. What yeah, it it's, it's plant-based. It's plant-based. It's plant plant no, oh, oh, you're talking about that. How does a peel's plant-based protection make produce last longer? Yeah, it's a okay. It looks pretty cool. It it lo, lo, it long elongates the shelf life of fruits and vegetables. That's dope. So if you're telling me that there's no, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, and this will probably change your your whole view on this topic that we're talking about. All right. If if we was taught in school by our social studies or world history teachers how the pilgrims used to plant seeds in the ground to like grow corn and and watermelon and all of that, that's the that's the normal way of actually having fruit and vegetables that is good for your body. It's to grow it from a seed. Now, if you think that they're not actually out here manipulating food and trying to depopulate the population, because if you look in America, 
It's nothing but an oak. Yeah, Thank you have you, people that are fit physically, but not mentally. And the ones that are mentally fit are not physically fit. You see what I'm saying? Uh huh. At the end of the day, they are manipulating food because you cannot grow watermelon without a seed. You cannot grow an apple without a seed. You cannot grow grapes without a seed. They are literally, they are literally creating these fake foods in labs. Because tell me, how can you grow a watermelon, a seedless watermelon, without a seed? Typically, you. I've, well, first of all, I've never seen seedless watermelon. Does that exist? I, I'm not talking about the white seeds. I'm talking about the black seeds. That is the actual seed that you plant in the ground uh -huh. to grow another water. Well, usually, usually, uh, usually, when it comes to to watermelon. Uh, they would need to grow it with, like, in the ground with dihydrogen monoxide. That's how they would grow a watermelon. What I'm saying though, they're not. You cannot grow a seedless watermelon without a seed. Do you see what I'm saying? They are manipulating this. They are creating a seedless watermelon in these labs that nobody really knows about. All right, I'll probably eat it. Do you do? Like, there's so much hidden stuff that nobody in America really knows is here in America. What are your like, thoughts you on, what are your, can I ask you a question real quick? Go ahead. What are your thoughts on the earth being flat? I mean, do I have speculations that the earth could possibly be flat? Yes, I do. Okay. Because in ancient Hebrew language, NASA actually means to deceive. Oh, really? Now, the, the, I'm for real. The reason why I'm sitting here telling you this, you know, I'm a firm believer in the Bible. Uh, uh -huh. I, I study the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 6 through 10. It talks about how God built a, firm, a firmament in the midst of the waters to separate the waters above from the waters below. Okay. As above, as below. That is as the sign of that. Okay. Interesting. Well, we've been talking for 25 minutes. I, I definitely appreciate your uh, insight. Before you go, I, I just wanted to let you know, um, I did want to find out more about DHMO. You know, we were talking about dihydrogen monoxide. Uh, mm -hmm. And I did find out exactly what chemical it is. Did you want to know? Which chemical is it? It's water. <laughs> Fucking Christ.